we are live. <laughs> really? Yes, because uh, I tell you, I I am not so good to manage it. But, no, we are already uh, live. Yes, we are live. We have uh, 70 people. Let's start. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's start uh, a little bit earlier because uh, I uh, I push I push some button. I don't know uh, why. Okay. And my mouse it's not working. So luckily I'm dressed. Yes, but we have we start with uh, we start with ten minutes earlier. We have ah, okay. time to speak. Okay, uh, <laughs> for people who look at us, I say hello, hello guys. <laughs> we realize now we are in life. Uh, today I have a nice guest, Frederic Comandeli. Uh, he was in Romania. He was uh, in the second uh, edition of Dental Future. I don't tell you too much because I. Uh, in this life, I want to let him to speak more than me. Hello, Federico. Hello, Dan. Thank, Thank you for inviting me Thank for you the uh, instant live. Yeah, sorry for this kind of uh, mistake, but uh, you know, it's happened. Uh, it's, not, uh, yeah. it's not a big deal. I'm ready. <laughs> yes, we are ready. <laughs> yes, we try to, to, to manage some things, but we realize, uh, I realize we are in life. Uh, Federico, tell me about two words about you. Okay, um, yes, because maybe no one knows me, so I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you something about me. I, I live in Milan. I'm Italian, and I always uh, lived in Milan, even if uh, I traveled uh, quite a bit for my education. Uh, since uh, three years, uh, I have a daughter. Uh, she's uh, three years old, uh, three, year, three, three years old, and uh, she never stops speaking. <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, since uh, she started speaking, she never stopped. So now I am uh, half-time dentist and uh, half-time uh, father. Oh, it's good. That that means uh, you are lucky because uh, you know uh, that means your wife stops speaking. Uh, <laughs> Yes, yes, she speaks less now, <laughs> so it's, it's better, but it's better. Uh, we have a visa one, but uh, she's uh, incredible. Oh, when uh, we play the, the game of silence, she, <laughs> she cannot do that. Ah, good idea, because I have a five years old uh, son, and yeah, I remember. because I speak a lot, he speaks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it's good, good idea this with uh, this game. Uh, about your wife, is dentist or you are only one dentist in? No, no, no I'm the only one. Uh, uh, luckily, uh, she's uh, doing uh, jewelry. She's uh, um, like an artist for jewelry. But uh, I'm the only one uh, in the family. Uh, but my father is a dentist, though. Ah, you come from a family from dentist. Yes, yes. My father is a dentist uh, since. Uh, 40 years now, I think. She's going to retire soon, but she still enjoys the, the profession. So I'm happy that uh, we are still working together. Nice, nice. Uh, I understand your daughter speak a lot, but tell me, how was you when you were like a child? Uh, I, I don't know if I was a, a big speaker, uh, but I know that I was an annoying guy. My, my parents always complain that uh, I was uh, really harder than my, my brother. So I, I think that I improved just a little, not too much, but I improved uh, just a little when I, I, I grew older. And uh, I was a very competitive kid, I think. And uh, I did a uh, few sports and I was, I, was, I always try to compete and I, I think that I brought this kind of attitude in my profession in, uh, in these years. Yeah, I, I know you because I, I see you, you, are, uh, you work a lot. I know, I know you try a lot and you, you, you are a great dentist and uh, yes, I think you are a very competitive guy. Uh, but when you was a child, was okay. Uh, you was a good one. You was silent. You was a naughty one. You remember something stupid things what you're doing and uh, uh, you keep in your mind now. 
I think I think I was forced to be um, to behave well because uh, I was beaten up <laughs> a lot when I was uh, not behaving. But um, however, I, I was not bad. I, I, I enjoyed the people, other other guys. I was not a, an introverse uh, kid, so I, I enjoyed the. Uh, staying with our kids. And uh, what do you uh, dream to become when you are age school? Because, okay, I know, I understand your father is dentist, but always it was your dream to become a dentist? No, absolutely not. Because uh, uh, like most of the kids, uh, my first dream was to be uh, a professional sportsman. You know, because mm. it's, uh, I, I think m many kids, okay, some, some of us want uh, to be astro uh, astronauts, uh, or other things. I, uh, I really liked sports and I wanted to be a professional uh, sportsman. Uh, but my parents uh, calculated the odds uh, for me and uh, decided that uh, it, was, uh, it would have been a better idea to go to school and study. <laughs> and, <laughs> like you know, every parent. I, yeah. I think that uh, it, it, it is better for uh, uh, from the perspective that I have nowadays, it was a good choice. Yeah, thank you, Ben. And uh, how you decide to study medicine, dental medicine? Uh, as, as I told you, my father is a dentist. And even if uh, he didn't push me into this work at all, absolutely. Uh, he always told me, uh, think uh, well about it because uh, it's uh, a it's a strange job. If you don't like it, it will be a nightmare for you to, to do that for the next 40 years that you have to work. So I think it was the kind of parent that never pushed me into this job. And however, I think that being with him and so breathing a dentistry and he, he's still a lot in love with this kind of, with this profession, uh, push me into this uh, uh, profession. So even if uh, he didn't want to push me, yeah, somehow I think that meeting with him uh, pushed me uh, into dentistry. Nice. And uh, how was uh, you, you go to the university? How was first two years of the university? The first two years, you mean? Yeah. Uh, there was the most, uh, uh, boring. Uh, <laughs> yes, because in the first years uh, you have to study all the basics. Uh, the yeah, basic. yeah. Every, and, everywhere in uh, all the world is the same. And this is the this I have the question because uh, dentists most of them don't like this part, but I meet and a lot of dentists they, they love it. This part of uh, no. clinical. For me, it was the harder, the hardest. Uh, sorry, the hardest. Uh, and uh, it was really boring because, uh, okay, you know that you need that stuff in order to be a better uh, dentist, but uh, it is, a, for me, it was a lot better when we could study clinical stuff uh, and see the patients because our, our job is mainly an artisanal job. So, uh, I, it really changed when I could uh, see the patients. And uh, what do you remember? Something in your uh, university, what do you remember? Something you like it? I don't know, a teacher or something, a person who remain in your memory? Yeah, I, I still uh, uh, see, let's say, uh, five or six of my uh, um, of my friends that now are colleagues, we still uh, see each other. Next uh, uh, Saturday, we will have a barbecue together. And some others, uh, we lost the connection. And uh, as uh, every time in school, uh, I, I remember that uh, I have some better teachers and some others that I didn't like too much. And of course, I cannot tell you the names because <laughs> who knows? Yeah. I don't think that they, they are looking at this live right now, but 
uh, I can remain I, on, the, on the Facebook, yes, for many years now. <laughs> exactly. So I, I don't want to tell you the names, but I had a really good uh, professors and others that uh, were not good. Because, for example, I can tell you that uh, I, I, I know very, very few about uh, orthodontics. And maybe <laughs> uh, there is a kind of connection with the professor that uh, I had in, at the university. You know, it, it is like in college, in uh, high school, uh, at, at every level of education, when you have uh, a teacher that, uh, with, with whom you cannot connect, uh, and uh, he, maybe on his side or her side, uh, they cannot uh, give you enough uh, motivation to study their, their um, subject, you lose interest uh, and it's harder to, to study. To study. Yes, I understand very well because I have the same problem when I was in high school with my English. Uh, I have a good uh, teacher on the English, but I don't have this connection. I don't feel it. And I really was very hard for me to speak English like speak now. I don't speak very well, but still you understand me and everybody understands no, me. I just speak very well. <laughs> Come on. But uh, I, uh, I need to go to some private lesson after I finished the high school. And I made a lot of years this kind of private lesson to have courage to speak, uh, to speak English. And I remember uh, first meeting with that teacher was something, something was not good and it's keep it for the uh, rest of four years of the high school and uh, I don't I think it's very easy this part and uh, you know can uh, affect your, your life uh, about, uh, we start uh, before we speak uh, we speak uh, somehow I, I really want to thank you because you you take me you were so kind with me and you uh, don't uh, don't put pressure uh, please tell me how is dentistry now in uh, in Milan? What changed uh, after uh, COVID, COVID and how is it now? Yeah. Oh, it's uh, you can find uh, the ma ma many different uh, applications uh, of the COVID uh, rules because you know that now we are almost uh, coming out of this uh, problem. I mean, not only. Not economically, but at least uh, in our everyday life, because it is uh, two days now that in uh, here in Lombardy, in the near Milan, where we live, we can uh, uh, avoid, we can stop wearing masks uh, when we are outside. So life, uh, I can say that uh, was, uh, uh, it's back. Okay, I'm, we can do most of the stuff that uh, we were used to do. In the offices, uh, we still have uh, all the rules uh, that uh, uh, we started using uh, in March. Uh, but of course, our offices are open full day. We have to keep uh, more time between one patient and another. I'd say like 20% more in order to uh, get dress and undress before and after, and leave some time for our uh, assistants to decontaminate the, the rooms. So there is a, a, lot of, a lot more time needed to, uh, to work between, uh, for each patient. And that's why we are trying to uh, condense uh, more appointments uh, into uh, only one appointment. But what about the patient? Uh, they come to dentistry, some yes, only of have the problems, uh, big problems, or? No, I, I, in this moment, uh, they are coming uh, in my office, uh, and I heard a few colleagues, uh, and uh, everyone is saying the same, the same stuff that there is a kind of uh, um, willing to start again, again, and so we are seeing patients, and uh, they trust us because, uh, I mean, I, I speaking for myself so they know that in our office we are very very uh, uh, they wanted to follow the rules for contamination and so they trust us so we don't have any problem uh, uh, letting our patient coming to our office 
-hmm. and uh, we are seeing a lot of patients. I don't know what uh, will happen uh, in the autumn because there will be some problems uh, from an economical point of view. Yes, this was the uh, next question for me. What about the economic problems? What do we expect it? What is the feeling in the <laughs> dentistry in Italy? I don't uh, know, only dentistry because... I'm, I'm an, op an optimistic person. However, I think that uh, after September, we will have uh, big problems because uh, uh, the laws that uh, were made just for COVID, for example, are forbidding uh, companies uh, to fire people in these days. But after September, companies, uh, if nothing changes, uh, will fire some people. I, I don't know how many people, but uh, a lot will be fired. And of course, if there is uh, uh, people with uh, no more job, uh, big problems are coming. But uh, I hope uh, I'm wrong, but uh, I don't know. Right now, it's not bad. It's better than uh, I thought when it was uh, February or March. Yes, but I believe it's something like a boom uh, before the storm, you know, it's like yeah. uh, now everyone wants to finish their problem. They don't want to stop. Uh, they try uh, to be, I don't know, in the, these two months, they try to finish a lot of uh, problem or dentist problem because they uh, believe and think something wrong happened in, uh, in September. But uh, in the same time, Okay, we can't stop to don't do it anything. We need to remain optimist and to try to to do everything what is good. But uh, yes, I think a lot of people will be fired in the next four, six, five months maybe. Uh, not, so yes. you think so? At, uh, here yes, at, not uh, only in Romania. I think Romania? in all the Europe. Uh, and I think a poor country like Romania will be more affected than. Uh, rich country than Italy, like Italy. I don't think we are considered a rich country anymore. Uh, yes, no, but you have, uh, you know, you have uh, this socialist for many years before us yeah, and okay. it's big difference in uh, and government and also. And uh, in here in Romania in September, October, uh, I think will be election. And after election, I don't know, this, all these decisions to take for the people, this will stop. And I, really, I am really afraid about this uh, time, but not uh, still election. I am afraid about what happened after election because uh, yeah. for that moment. Because before elections, uh, everything is, goes well because everyone is uh, happy and uh, they will do yeah. great things. They, 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 they take money from everywhere. They uh, promise uh, and a lot of things and so on. But we'll see what happened after this period. Let's uh, let's stay optimist. Let's go back and uh, yeah, so. after uh, after you finish the university, you go and work with your father directly. Yes, I was. Uh, I have to say that I was quite lucky because um, I had my dad's office, and uh, in addition, he agreed uh, to let me do the surgery. That's my main field of interest. And this was really important uh, uh, in improving my skills because most graduated students have not this opportunity. So I, I have to, to say that. Please and tell uh, the other luck. Sorry? Please tell me more. Oh, okay, the other luck uh, um, is that I had, uh, was, um, I had the office that was running even without me. So I had time to go somewhere else to improve myself. And I understand that many of my friends or other dentists that have not this situation have to decide what to do and they cannot work and make money to live. And at the same time, try to improve uh, as much as they can. They usually uh, put aside one of these uh, two things in order to make things uh, work. I had uh, this opportunity and uh, it was a great luck. 
of course, because yes, I you, could go... You don't need it to make compromise because you don't need to leave from this dental office somehow. Yes, and if I was... Uh, even right now, if I'm not here, my family is running it and they are running it uh, well. So uh, it's a big luck because if I wanted to... When I was uh, in uh, New York, for example, I didn't have to think, uh, oh, what's happening there? Please tell was, me what, what you do in New York because I... Oh, I had... I, attend, I, I attended a, a short program in, uh, in implantology, but it was uh, many, many years ago because my biggest uh, implantologist, implantology training was at uh, Lake Como Institute uh, where Professor Tiziano Testori mm -hmm. is, uh, is teaching. And uh, I've been there for seven years. So my main training was there and uh, I took maybe sometimes so one week uh, or a few days to go somewhere else. Uh, I've been in uh, Boston uh, and uh, I met, I don't even remember how many years ago, but I met uh, Dr. Uh, Mandelaris uh, that they were at that time, the guys that knew most of the digital dentistry, but it was so many years ago that uh, I don't even remember. And this is, I think, it is uh, the biggest luck I have, I had uh, right now. Tell me about your trainings after you finish your uh, dentistry university, because you have this luck to work in your dental uh, clinic of your father, and you have somehow time and, uh, I don't know, uh, opportunity to do it. Tell me, I don't know, I, I know you make a lot, a lot of trainings, but uh, uh, let's speak a little bit, few of them. What do you think it's important, and not only for you, but only for the people who listen now or who will watch later? Uh, what kind of training you recommend? And uh, okay, okay, I think that now I have a bigger perspective uh, compared to a few years ago because when I was at the Lake Como Institute, I I, I was a tutor for the Lake Como Institute, and so I had the luck. Uh, to see from a distant point of view, the point of view of a teacher that uh, was Tiziano Testori and the point of view of the, of the student that were the dentist that was attending the courses. And it was uh, very important for me because uh, it is not always uh, so easy to understand both points of view. And that's why now I try as much as I can to put myself in the shoes of the students. Because sometimes one of the things that I noticed is that when a dentist go for a course, let's say a sinus lifting course, they are, as expected, really, really focused just into sinus lifting. And if there is, a, for example, a live surgery, they watch the live surgery and just watch the procedure. But the big stuff it is what is going on, what's going on around the surgery. Because of course, the professor has a team of people that are prepared and students or dentists, as you want to call them, should focus more on what's around the procedure because the final outcome of the procedure depends a lot on many small details that are not just in the procedure that is performed like the field preparation with the sterile instruments what is doing what is doing the second operator the assistant and uh, there is that many, many, many stuff that uh, has to be watched. I don't know if uh, I'm clear or not. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I understand it. Your your English is good. You are a little bit stressed, but <laughs> 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 but uh, no, it's uh, everything is good. I, I try to listen you more. And uh, what do you think? What kind of trainings do you recommend for the young student after they, for they finish? Surgery? If they want to do implantology. No, 
uh, yes, because this is your uh, field, but you, you can, uh, we oh, yeah. can talk I about can say, everything. I can speak about that uh, field and yeah. not much about the endo because uh, I cannot do an endo treatment. <laughs> don't, come, don't ever come to me for an endo. Uh, uh, I will yeah, pack your tooth and I will make you a favor. <laughs> I will spare you some pain. I understand. Let's let speak. Let's speak uh, a little bit. What kind of training do you recommend? Yes, yes. I for sure a a, a course of uh, on cadaver. I think it's really really important if someone wants to approach the surgery, because uh, you know you are in a safe environment and at the same time you can see really the anatomy that you study on the books, and with a cadaver course. If it is uh, done properly, you learn anatomy and uh, you become more confident uh, working with tissue, gums, uh, and everything. And the second thing that uh, helped me really a lot, if you can do that, if you are lucky, you have to find a, a very good uh, uh, professionist and uh, follow him for years. Because when you go for a course, uh, you usually see uh, something that it is a setup. So usually everything goes smoothly. But the important part in everything you learn, and right now for me it's still the most important part, is what's going wrong. Because the problems are comes when something goes wrong. Yes, but in the same time, think about a few trainings when you go and somebody tell you what is what was wrong on uh, his patient, on uh, his cases. Because when you look at most of the lecture of uh, most of this kind of trainings, uh, few of them, very few of them at the end put two, three slides with uh, what was wrong in, uh, in, in this career and with this patient. Why do you think they don't put this kind of uh, wrong things? Uh, I have to say that sometimes uh, uh, there is people that is asking you uh, avoiding uh, put that kind of stuff. It happened to me uh, a couple of times uh, that I prepared uh, a lecture and uh, I had some in a treatment, in a complex treatment, uh, so that has uh, so many uh, steps. I put inside the lecture some slides of something that went completely wrong. And however, at the end of, of the treatment, everything was okay. But I was asked, please remove this part because uh, uh, it is better to remove it. Why? When do you think they, because I know from mistake, I think it's easy to learn. Because I, I think is. so, I think so. And I really, really, like and esteem professionalist that shows their problems because if everything is always okay you don't have too much to learn i think that there is some this kind of feeling that now dentistry and lectures have to be like a show mm. so the the bar is always higher you have to have great slides, uh, great pictures. Uh, you, you have to check every detail because the others uh, will be uh, at the top. And maybe sometimes uh, mistakes, uh, failures uh, are, uh, for some people, don't fit uh, the, this kind of show. But yes. I really, I love very, very much when uh, there is people that show the audience failures. Yes, I agree with you about the show because when I organize Dental Future, I realize it's very hard to keep uh, 200 doctors uh, on the chairs uh, more than eight hours. You know, it's, it's very hard to, to look on. It's like an eight hours movie. And yes, it's important for, uh, uh, for them to be something attractive, to be something uh, nice and beautiful and to keep. But in the same time, uh, okay, you don't learn so much in the lecture, but uh, I think uh, you, you remain with some idea. And if you, every lecture, he put some mistake in the, and uh, I think people from the, from the room, 
become very, very uh, attentive, very, they are very curious because it's something new, you know, it's something new from them. They don't see mistakes, they don't, they see only so beautiful and perfect cases and they, uh, they think, okay, I, I have this kind in my office, one per year or one in five years. But I have a lot of problems and I don't know the, what to do. It. And when people put the problems, they realize, ah, it's good because I have in my office this kind of problem. I think so. I completely agree with you. If you remember, I don't know if you remember, but in dental future, uh, one of my cases, uh, I had uh, two implant failures at the same spot. Yes, yes. I, I remember that. This so, reason because it was, uh, was one of few people who put mistakes in his presentation. Yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> I was so dumb to place an implant again and again. And finally, okay, we, we save the case. But uh, I really love failures. I would love to see a Congress about uh, failures. That's right. <laughs> now you know, <laughs> we can put it online, everything. The next one the, is dental failure, not dental yeah, failure. Dental future, no, it's dental failure. Yes, this year is <laughs> dental failure. <laughs> <laughs> this is, is really hard because we uh, we postpone from the next years, but we'll see. We'll see what happens because of economical problem, not uh, because of uh, dentistry problem. But we'll yeah, see. For sure. Uh, I know you do something like you do some training now. Let's yeah. speak a little bit what what you do now. What what kind of trainings and uh, please speak more okay. a little bit. Uh, I. So when I started training, I realized how hard it is to organize a, a training, a live training, because performing a lecture, uh, it's not so hard. I mean, if you have the topic, of course, if it is your topic, if you have something to say, preparing a lecture is something you do on your own. So you can do it by yourself uh, at your desk you just have you just need time and uh, time to think and organize your material it is not easy at all because uh, what usually uh, when i prepare a lecture i really mm, it, it really takes me a lot of time uh, preparing it and the shorter the lecture is the more time it takes because i have to cut uh, so many stuff if i have uh, three hours uh, for speaking, it's a lot easier because you can put everything in the lecture and you will have time to say everything. But if you have 30, 40 minutes, it's a lot harder because you have maybe the same ideas that you explained in three hours, but you have to make choices and cut, 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 cut in order to uh, be able to deliver the same message to people in just 40 minutes. Because if you leave too much stuff in it, people will not follow you. Because of course, I can follow myself. So I can say, okay, yes, I can do this in 40 minutes. No problem. With uh, next, 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 next slide. But people that don't know you, uh, don't know your topic, uh, will not follow you for sure. So the hard part of that kind of uh, training is to organize material thinking from the perspective of the, of the audience. But the real problem is when you try to organize live courses because it's another, uh, I think it's more difficult because uh, you have to find uh, people that help you organizing you have to think about a lot, a lot more stuff to, to do. Right now we are trying to organize, um, this, is, this, is, there is this course that I'm trying to organize with my friend since I think two years. It is two years that we are telling us, okay, we have to organize this course about uh, flaps and sutures, and, uh, but we are still at uh, slide zero. I think you need a good manager. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I, I would love it. <laughs> to, to start. Hey, because, I you know, think that uh, if you come in, in the, if you join the team uh, next month, we can have uh, the, uh, our, 
Yes, I have this kind of different because dental future was an idea in September and uh, he must be do it in the January, but it was so, so short time, but in March, it was it. This is five, six months. And uh, you see, it was a good, uh, good uh, Congress to see like that. <laughs> yes, but uh, then I, I know you not much because we just met once. But uh, we talk a lot uh, when we was out, uh, when we went out uh, for dinner and to drink something. And I know that you have the ability to make uh, ideas uh, uh, concrete in in in, uh, in the real world. So you have an idea, and uh, just uh, yes. later, it is a project uh, that has uh, people, that has uh, places. And, yes, and, people tell me I'm crazy, but you know, the life is so short and if you want to do something, you do it. Okay. So, what, what <laughs> better you, it's, it's done, stay there and yeah, yeah. <laughs> we will organize this, uh, this course. This, this year will be hard, I, I know, because uh, we stop to, to do everything. Uh, we'll keep only this online and everything will be online. Because, uh, not because we can do it, because we can do a small uh, trainings and small on, but because we are afraid. In Romania, the number of COVID cases grow up every day, every day. And nobody wants to, to have this kind of COVID in their clinics or, uh, yes. or somewhere. And from this reason, somehow we stop to organize everything from this year, from, from the moment. We don't have, an, um, you know... I, I, I can't tell anybody. Today I meet some, uh, some guys from marketing and he asked me, okay, what is your project from the next six, six months? I say, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know because I don't have a projection so much time. Six months, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of time now. But uh, yeah. I know what I do this month and next month and I hope <laughs> we'll do fine. Uh, yeah, that. however, I'm, will you speak about it? Yes. And... Uh, uh, tell me about something do you consider uh, challenging in your work every day? Because I know it's different. Every day it's different. Every patient is different. What, uh, what do you like and what do you dislike? I understand something about endo, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, that is uh, uh, beyond my possibilities. So it, oh, okay. I, I'm not even considering it is too much for me. Yes, you know, it's like a fighter because uh, always uh, guys who put implant and... I lost you. You hear me? Yes. Yes, yeah. now yes. Uh, it's not like a day today for me. <laughs> uh, okay. I, say, I say always it's... Uh, it's a different approach between uh, an, uh, a doctor, a dentist who put an implant and a dentist who make endo. Why, why do you think it's so different uh, perspective? Yeah, I see the difference in perspective because uh, it, it, is what you, it is what you do. Because sometimes, many times happens to me that I see teeth uh, that I consider uh, lost, that maybe I say, saved or uh, tried to be saved uh, doing a samendo and uh, I would have extracted them and at the same time I'm sure that there are the same number of endodontists uh, that see some teeth that they would have saved that we maybe extracted however I think that I want to I know what works in my hands and sometimes if I decide to extract a tooth is because I know that in that condition, uh, my implant will last a lot of years. And uh, of course I cannot be sure about it, but uh, now I have quite a few years of experience and I, I don't consider myself a guy that extract a lot of uh, uh, teeth that could have been saved. So I know that uh, there is always and always will be a lot of debate between uh, endodontists uh, and uh, implantologists. Uh, I think that sometimes uh, and, uh, the endodontist has, uh, is right and sometimes uh, the implantologist is right. I have to say that uh, 
nowadays uh, uh, on social media you see a lot of cases and sometimes i'm really sad about what i see because there is people that uh, is uh, I want to show their cases in which they extracted all the teeth and I think that those uh, treatment plans are at least uh, very bad. So this kind of, uh, I can say, there is not just one truth. It depends uh, on what works in your hands and what uh, doesn't and uh, training and however in in, in my uh, in, in my practice in what I do every day I think uh, the most challenging part is not deciding uh, if a, a tooth has to be extracted or not but the most challenging part is maybe consistency so uh, it's really hard because uh, it is not uh, hard to do nice cases because uh, if you do a, a lot of cases uh, and you try to improve yourself, you can do nice cases. Everyone can do nice cases worth sharing. Let's say worth sharing. Mm -hmm. But uh, the hard part is to deliver a standard of quality for every patient uh, you treat, or at least try to do the same thing at the same quality for every patient you treat uh, no matter if it is an interesting case or, or not. And the hardest part is, is that uh, sometimes uh, during the treatment, uh, something goes wrong. And uh, for, because of my um, character, my behavior, sometimes I, I get upset and uh, I can lose interest because of this uh, uh, partial failure. So the hardest part is the, to stay focused and the, to try to, to do the same thing at the same level for every patient, for every case you treat. And the other hard part uh, is, the, is failure. For me, it's uh, really, really hard to cope with the failure. But everyone that do this job has to, to work with failure. And I think it's normal to be like that. But tell me about some cases who challenge you in the last period, or you remember or something. Uh, there is this really, really nice case that we are going to finish, I think, in the next month, uh, if COVID, if COVID uh, let us finish it. Yes. And uh, it, was an, it is an, a really an interesting one because uh, this lady, uh, came with just one central incisor that was um, that, uh, had moved uh, buccally and she asked us just to fix that tooth. And uh, the challenge here was uh, to make her understand that uh, that tooth was just a bell ringing because of uh, a problem of all the mouth. And it's really challenging because uh, in the mind of a patient, uh, it's not hard to believe you if uh, she comes uh, and tell you, okay, my problem is this tooth. Mm -hmm. And you start uh, telling her, okay, wait, you have this problem right now because it is the first of a long list. And the hard part was uh, to uh, be able to make her chew during a complex rehabilitation because uh, she lost the vertical dimension and so we had at the same time to place some implants uh, to save some teeth uh, perio uh, i don't think endo we didn't do endo but perio for sure prosto and uh, it was challenging because uh, we had to work uh, firstly on one side of the of the mouth and uh, when we um, could increase and fix the vertical dimension of one side, we could start uh, working uh, on the other side. And we are working on her since uh, more than one year and we did not, we couldn't finish the, the, that central incisor yet. So it <laughs> will be the last thing we will do 
uh, in this uh, very long and complex uh, treatment. But you keep uh, the last thing, you keep the, that incisor to come to you, yes, not to finish the. Yes, job. exactly. Because <laughs> it, it, if I fix her, they will stop coming. Okay. Yes, I think I, 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 my impression was this kind of patient are only Romanian, but uh, we see are uh, still. No, no, no. Uh, I think uh, everywhere in the world uh, it's the same thing. Okay, uh, you know. I know you always were very modest and you speak so uh, modestly, but uh, uh, please tell me about some, some guys who influenced you, uh, before, not your father, because I'm sure he was the only one, but uh, some uh, doctor, dentist who you like them or you follow them and you recommend somebody else to follow or something yeah. like that. Mm, I had few mentors and uh, okay i will not mention my father because uh, no I, because everybody I, understand your father is okay. your first mentor so and uh, my father is very lucky because system. of this one for sure is uh, T dr testori from como because i spent seven times of my career uh, seven years of my career there and uh, i learned the, the basics of my implantology of the implantology that I'm doing now from him. So it was my biggest mentor uh, speaking about uh, in implantology. And after him, uh, I had a few other mentors, uh, but for a sm smaller part of my practice. Working with him, as I told you before about the, the training and the courses. So living uh, uh, every week, uh, in his office, uh, let me understand and see how he treated the patients uh, in everyday practice. And uh, that was very important for me. And I could understand uh, because he does a lot of research too, how he approach uh, research and uh, that's very valuable because sometimes when you see things from the outside, you get a wrong impression. So I think my biggest mentor, uh, speaking about dentistry, uh, it's the story for sure. Uh, tell me about, um, what do you believe about this digitalization of dentistry? I don't believe in digital dentistry. Mm? No, why? But no, it's I'm joking. real. I'm joking. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I, I really, uh, from, from day one of my practice, I was waiting for digitization and intro scanner because I, when I was younger, I was a bit uh, of, I can say maybe a nerd with uh, computers. I really love the computers. I spent a lot of hours uh, on computers. I, I, I almost became a, a, a pro gamer. I don't know mm -hmm. if uh, I, I played a lot with computers. So I really wanted to uh, work with computers uh, in dentistry. And uh, uh, I started this kind of transition when I bought my first scanner uh, six years ago. I was waiting, uh, really, when I, from, from when I started working. And uh, I believe that the digital dentistry, I cannot say it's the future anymore because it's the present. Five years ago, I was telling people it will be the future, trust digital dentistry, work digitally. But right now, I think that uh, no, uh, no one anymore is telling you that the digital dentistry is the future. So for me, it's a game changer. And I totally believe in digital dentistry. However, I, I would underline that it is not a religion because there is some people that uh, Think that uh, since uh, they are they have a, a intraoral scanner, everything uh, have to be done with an intraoral scanner, 
uh, no matter what, uh, and uh, they just uh, blindly believe uh, that uh, digital dentistry work. I made uh, the opposite uh, path. When I started six years ago, I was like that. So I wanted to do everything uh, from the single crown to the full archer with uh, an intraoral scanner. And uh, uh, when time passes, when the years uh, passes, I understood that uh, there are some uh, aspects of the, uh, of the intraoral scanner, for example, that uh, are not good enough yet. It is just a matter of time, of course. I'm not saying that uh, they will never be able to do, for example, a full arch on implants, but uh, I just published uh, a paper with some, pr uh, some friends in which we compared, uh, we, we um, created an hybrid workflow, digital and analogical, in order to take the best out of the digital dentistry and the intraoral scanner, and the best from uh, the analogic workflow. So I don't think that it is a religion and everything has to be done in this way. And uh, when you, when you buy an intraoral scanner, you have to throw away everything you studied or everything you used. You have to, to, to use the best technique and the best instrument to deliver the, uh, the, the work that you have to do. You need to adapt your, uh, your work. At, uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. But but yet, what do you believe? I think, I don't know, in five years, maybe will be a great library of uh, form of tooth and everything. And you scan uh, the amount of the patient and the software will give you everything on the table. And you push a button and you don't need the dental technician. What do you, what do you think about this? Uh, I think that dental technician will be always an important part of this uh, uh, transition. And I, I found myself speaking a lot, a lot more with my technicians since when I started working digitally. Because uh, uh, I think that for them, work uh, um, improved a lot. Because uh, years ago, for example, the dental technician has just uh, a stone cast, sometimes a uh, few pictures of a patient, but now they have uh, an intraoral scan that sometimes has colors, so it's uh, even nicer to, to see. They have uh, better pictures, face scans, uh, CT scan, and uh, right now the 4D, I mean uh, motion, is, uh, is coming. It's already here, but uh, let's say, okay, in a few years, uh, most of the patient uh, will have the motion tracked. And so I think that uh, from their perspective, the, the work is better because uh, they can understand and they, they can feel closer to the patient that uh, they are working uh, with. So I, I don't think that uh, in the near future, we will stop uh, working with dental labs especially if you want to deliver a high quality uh, dental, uh, dental pieces, dental works. Because there is a this other important thing uh, about uh, the responsibility. Because for example, I have uh, a 3D print, two 3D printers and I discovered that when I want to print something and place it directly in the, in the mouth of the patient, I am responsible uh, of, uh, the, of what I'm putting in the mouth of the patient. It's uh, heavier, it's harder compared to when I just uh, ask my lab, okay, do that. And uh, I place it into the mouth of the patient. So uh, this kind of sharing of the weights of a burden of, uh, of a treatment it's uh, a lot better. 
And I see some offices that works a lot uh, in chair side that deliver works that uh, I don't like because, uh, okay, everyone nowadays, as you said, can press a button and make a Serec uh, do a crown. But uh, doing a crown and doing a, a, a very nice crown, a big difference. Not the same thing. Yeah, I know what you say because uh, people don't understand all the time. But uh, like you say, I, I here in Romania a lot of uh, doctors who buy Serex and after that they sell it because they realize after six months, one year, it's useful because it's not like on the TV, you know. Uh, but uh, what what do you think about uh, will be the next gadget what will change the dentistry? Oh, the next... As soon as uh, I'll have the money, I will buy a motion tracking device because mm -hmm. uh, I think that it will it is uh, the the link that we are missing because we always work in digital dentistry. We still works uh, we still we still work in aesthetic. Okay, I know that you can simulate uh, motion with uh, softwares like Exocad, but uh, in my in my hands and in my in the hands of my labs, it is almost uh, useless because uh, it is still a motion related to analogical articulators. So you can. Uh, it is not my field of. Uh, I'm, I'm not an expert in this stuff. Uh, Okay, but uh, you can do kinesiography, you can do a lot of stuff, and then you can try to, pl to put that into the exocad. Uh, but it is uh, like, so you are trying not to fix a problem, but you are trying to replicate what you did in, in an analogical workflow, replicate it in, in a, a virtual world. With the motion tracking, you, uh, we, we are able to track real motion of the patient without the need of an articulator. And you can really work exactly in the same way the mouth of the patient works. So I think that the, the next game changer will be that kind of technology. And of course, uh, there are some time will be needed in order to to, to trim it and uh, to wait in order to be accurate enough because everything uh, ends uh, in accuracy because uh, motion tracking is available since many years but the accuracy was too low and clinically not uh, uh, wasn't good enough so it was uh, just a game to show maybe at, at, at the Congress, okay, I have this kind of tool and it's cool because you see, you know, the mandible, the jaws that moves uh, and uh, you are super excited, excited, excited uh, looking at it, but working with it uh, every day and making it uh, really uh, work as it should, it's another, kind of thing. So my, the next toy I will buy will be maybe a new scanner and a motion tracking device. Yeah, you make me curious. I will, uh, I will start to look about them. <laughs> and uh, what do you think about the materials? Because you see in this next uh, last uh, 10 years, the materials change a lot. Appears this zirconia, monolithic, shades, different kind of uh, ceramics. What do you think will happen in the next future? I, I see, I think last year or so, two years ago, I don't know, it's an Italy company. They printed uh, liquid zirconia or something like composites like that. What do you think What do you think will be the future of this kind of material? Well, even if I'm not a material expert, I'd say that for sure we will see a, a big increase in 3D printing, of course, because of 3D printing as a technology is a lot more efficient than milling, you know. Yes, you don't you, lose you so much do, material. And exactly, you can do everything. Exactly, and you can do, if you want a more uh, complex shapes. The problem is that right now, for example, with ceramics or zirconia, you can, there are technologies that let you print a zirconia, but uh, 
as far as I know, the two major problems are, but it is not uh, accurate enough. And uh, the quality of the zirconia that comes out from this kind of printer is not as good as uh, what you can do with milling uh, right now. But I think it is just uh, um, a, a problem of time. Maybe in the next year, the technology will improve and we will uh, print everything. So yes, I'm agree with you. I, I think I really like uh, 3D printing, uh, but it is uh, not at the level that we wanted. Because, if, for example, I just uh, tried a few of uh, a few resins uh, for uh, provisional crowns, uh, but what I tried was uh, still far from uh, a, a milled PMMA. If you think about it, uh, provisional made uh, of milled PMMA compared to, you know, the old standard resin are like definitive crown. I removed them uh, after three months, uh, five months, and they are great. They are still uh, clean, uh, flawless, they are great. And so it is, it is not uh, so easy to beat uh, that kind of materials. Yes. 3D printing will beat it for sure. It is just a matter of time. But right mm -hmm. now, the, what can, what's come out from milling, it's, uh, it's still exceptional, I think. The difference uh, for what I saw, it's still big. And somehow it's easy and uh, it's more competitive on the market because, you know, uh, are a lot of, uh, when your digital appears, it will be very easy to the dentist to choose if he sent to a dental technician in Italy or in Romania or in Ukraine or in China, I don't know, everywhere. And I think uh, somehow maybe will appear a new laws and will uh, we'll make some discipline in this one or will be a world, uh, world uh, market and we'll see what happened there. But do you mean, do you mean sending uh, uh, works uh, from country to country? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I hear I like a lot. That. See, re I, I just uh, delivered uh, two crowns uh, coming from Spain and I really like this part uh, of the digital environment because uh, yeah. the world is uh, smaller. And of course, yes, it's beautiful, but you know, the, it's not, it's uh, the legislation and still Italy, because I know it's not uh, regulated to this kind of uh, work, workflow. I don't know. This is, uh, this is idea. And I think they need to change it because it's like uh, from many years, uh, you, it's very easy to work like that. And uh, somehow they need to change. Uh, tell me about some feedback you received from your patient and do you remember now and was something uh, you make to say, okay, I, I really was a really good decision to become a dentist and uh, I, I really love this, uh, this job. Uh, I know it's hard because I had a lot yes, of Yes, because uh, usually the feedback is that uh, we cost too much. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard, that's the main feedback that we usually have. So it's hard to, uh, to overcome this, uh, this part. Uh, well, I, I, don't, I, I don't believe the Italian patients are so, um, how to say, uh, no, I think it's not like a Scottish, you know, these guys are a little bit grimpy with the money, but I know Italian, so, they love the life. I think you are not informed well. Because uh, <laughs> in Italy, uh, uh, dentists uh, ha have, a, have a bad reputation, still mm -hmm. have a bad reputation because of uh, what some dentists uh, did uh, many, many years ago. But mm -hmm. nowadays, uh, you know, we work uh, as, um, uh, we run our offices uh, as any kind of, uh, let's say, business activity and our prices uh, you know better than me because uh, you do this job uh, in a bigger scale, okay? But the prices are not uh, invented, okay? We we try to to make our prices based on our expenses, okay? 
and uh, many years Most ago things were different uh, dentists uh, uh, earned a lot of money and so they gained uh, that kind of bad reputation in these days oh, yeah. uh, things changed uh, and uh, very few of us uh, are rich as uh, even if uh, our patient uh, most of our patient thinks uh, Think, think of it, we are very, very rich. Very rich. I understand. But still, you have patients who give you a good feedback. I, I know. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, jokes apart, the, the, I think that usually the best feedback that uh, I have uh, is that uh, uh, we finish a, a case and the patient is really, really happy about uh, the job is done. I'm really uh, clinic, a clinically oriented person. And that's also, I think, uh, one of my limits. And so I usually tend to focus really a lot about just teeth, okay? Sometimes there is people that maybe want some more empathy, but each one of us has a, have a different character. So I, I at least try to make good teeth. So when the patient say that he's really, really um, satisfied uh, about the teeth that uh, I made for him, I'm, I, I'd say that I'm satisfied and, uh, and I'm happy. And uh, I'm also very, very interested in the feedback uh, not about the, not from the patient, but from colleagues, because uh, nowadays that I'm trying to create the content for colleagues, for example, about with, with lectures uh, with my social pages, uh, I really look forward uh, what they have to say about the content I create. You know, because if I uh, create some content and publish some content. I don't do it for myself. I want to do it for, for the others. So I, I really want the people to tell me what they think about what I published. So that's an important part. And uh, this is a really nice part of social, uh, social media. When I started uh, playing with social media, uh, I think almost two years ago, I, I didn't look at that as a nice thing. I just wanted to start just to, as a game, but now that it is almost two years that I'm working with, with them, I see that there is also a lot of good stuff with social media. Because uh, for example, you can find people that it is not famous at all and uh, do amazing stuff. And uh, since the world is the audience, because if I publish uh, now, there is uh, people from Brazil that uh, maybe just uh, woke up and see the Instagram and uh, I come out uh, in their Instagram feed and they will tell, will tell me what they think about what I published. And in a few hours uh, from Japan, they will be awake and uh, they will give me their feedback. Yes, it's amazing this kind of technology and the social media change our lives a lot. Uh, I try to remember how is it without this Facebook, Instagram, and it's harder because it's... Uh, yes. No, I, uh, I'm not so old. I, 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 I have 39, but uh, still uh, I, uh, I know the life before, uh, before social media. Uh, has good parts and bad parts. Yes, I, sometimes I say too much in one day on the Facebook, on the social sure. media, not only personal but on the business way and so on. But sometimes you realize it's so easy for me to speak with you, with some guys from Japan, from Brazil, from everywhere, and only a few seconds, and everything is great because. Uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it was so hard to imagine this could happen so easy. Yes, there is a lot of bad stuff, but uh, think about uh, us, me and you. What happened between me and you? Maybe it, it would have been, uh, it wouldn't have been possible uh, many years ago because no, we connected. Uh, okay, by 
uh, Real okay. life, it's, yes, it's, it's uh, but in, in the same time, it's very important, this real life connection. But still of that, think about, uh, we speak with Simone, and after Simone, we speak with you, and uh, with Andrea, and uh, everything, you know, it's, it's growing up in, in, I don't know, in one week or something like that. Exactly. And, uh, so it's, uh, it's amazing. I, I know Simone from Ukraine, from Vlad. And uh, I, I, I wear there because I like some congrats who do it. And uh, I realized, okay, if he can do it, I can do it. <laughs> but I need some speakers. <laughs> yeah, it's easy for you. Uh, yeah, and, uh, you can, and you uh, can do it. You said, well, you yeah. can do it. <laughs> and uh, after, uh, after I, I speak with Simone, which was so great and uh, it's amazing. I consider my friend now. And uh, he, he makes some more connection and so on. Uh, besides of being dentist, uh, who are you? Uh, what are your patients? Okay, since three years, uh, I'm, as I told you, half a dentist <laughs> and half a father. And uh, it's a joke, but it's, it's real because before my daughter, I, uh, my main interests were, were uh, skiing, uh, kiteboarding, and mm. uh, I mean, like hobbies, okay. It was nice, not my nice, life, yeah. uh, but uh, I had yeah, these, yeah. these hobbies. Uh, and uh, I started playing golf with not great results, uh, but I started play, <laughs> play, playing golf. But I think and, you have a good attitude because you are like a guy who plays golf. You know, you are very a luxury guy and very yeah, I, great one. <laughs> you mean self control? Yes, yes, but I can tell you that sometimes I, I lost my temper. <laughs> I threw, I, I threw some, some stuff around. You, you, are, you are the most quiet Italian uh, guys who I know you because you never gesticulate with your hands. You are so calm <laughs> down. <laughs> I think it's... it's uh, I, I feel Italian uh, near to you, not you. Yeah, you, <laughs> you, you look... You, you, uh, you are quite uh, uh, closer to, to an Italian guy because you yeah, are very yeah, yeah. warm when you are uh, passionate when, when you speak. I, yeah. I, I know very, a lot of people uh, tell me that I'm uh, cold. Let's say like cold. German, more German. German. Yeah, more German Italian. Uh, what other plans do you have uh, on the future? I understand you need to do this training and maybe we'll talk. Yes, and, uh, remember, I, I will call you. But what kind of plans? What do you want to what do you want to do it? In personal plans and professional ones? Well, I, I want to uh, to make my business uh, grow. I mean my office, my business, I mean my office uh, to, to stay wealthy in order to um, make my employees uh, wealthy too. And uh, I will always try to be uh, in the first line, sir, of digital dentist, dentistry, sorry, because this is a kind of field that I, I like a lot. Uh, this is where I should come to. And of course, uh, I would like to learn something new because uh, even if uh, right now I'm more at the side, in the side of uh, teaching, I really love uh, uh, learning because, uh, you know, wh when you can learn something else every day, uh, it's a lot more fun because when you teach, uh, okay, you tell others uh, what you already know, but when you can go somewhere else and uh, learn something new, I think that you can, you can grow a lot. Like when I, when, I, when I came to you, okay, uh, for Dental Future, when you, uh, uh, you told me how you started and uh, how, your, how, you make, uh, how, how you made the things uh, grow, that was kind of uh, uh, learning for me. I wish I would have learned something uh, more concrete in order to come back and... Uh, be more like them, okay? But uh, I like uh, hearing uh, other people's experiences 
maybe more yeah. than telling them uh, mine. Yes, it's important because I learned this. Uh, I travel a lot, and I I love to to speak with the people because my grandfather led me, and he tell me all the time uh, if you visit a, a new uh, new country, if you meet somebody new, it's like you read the book. Always you have something to learn from uh, from that experience or from that meeting, and uh, I really I really believe all our life we we'll learn from uh, each other or from. Uh, from, uh, I don't know, moments in our life, from places we visit and so on. You, you know, you want to be like me, I want to be like you. <laughs> yeah, always, I think it's like a human being is like that. Everything, we want something different and this curiosity makes sense. I want to put a question because always uh, I put this question. Uh, please tell me what kind of car, what, what car you, you drive? What car? Like Yes, you, what is car, of course. I don't know what is what is your car because I I really want to find my dentist who you know when I go to the congress, yeah, it's like a Frankfurt show cars okay. because everybody have very expensive. Cars. I have uh, I no, have I... this kind of interview for many now I have two months or something like that and all my dentists have normal cars. What happened? <laughs> no, I, I'm telling you I have a second hand. Volvo, okay. not very, de not very yeah. dentist car. Yeah, uh, more, more like you. Because you I would like, uh, I would like uh, in, in the future, I would like to buy a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is still uh, too expensive. A friend of mine bought it and it's really great. But uh, for now, I will stay with my Volvo. And and he has uh, the place where he, with charger. It's easy for him to travel in Italy with Tesla, uh, or you need to take a little. Uh, so yeah. far, so good, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but he lives uh, near near my home, so here we have uh, a place, and uh, he charges it. Uh, he charges it uh, in his. Um, no, uh, no, no, no. Garage. In Yes, in the city I know it, but if you he, if you, you want to go in holidays on far away from uh, Milan. I don't know because uh, uh, it it has this car since uh, uh, two months, so holidays uh, are you, not best. Yeah. <laughs> I will yeah. tell you in a few months uh, how is uh, saying. Yes, I think in this kind of car, but in Romania we don't have still infrastructure from this kind of cars, and I know we have it. Yes, in the north uh, I know because uh, you know when when you when you surf uh, the Tesla Tesla website. Uh, you can see everything, uh, you can almost buy it. And so I, I checked where the chargers uh, were located. And I see that even if I travel for, uh, for work uh, quite a few ki kilometers, uh, I, I could do that uh, with, uh, with a Tesla. However, yeah. my, 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 my Volvo <laughs> is a no, standard nice. petrol engine uh, car. No, it's old, a nice one. Almost but it, old. Yes, but it's uh, but it's through Tesla. This kind of kind of cars will be the future. Maybe in the next time uh, I will tell you that I have a Ferrari or something like that. But yes, because you are staying in Milano and you have this. I have to. Other. I have to buy a Ferrari. Mm, yes, it's very important for my interview to have a Ferrari. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Thank you very much, Federico. And I am, oh, thank I'm, you then for inviting me. I'm excuse me because we started before the, we planned because I don't find the button, normal button, but I tell you my colleagues it's in the holidays and everybody yeah. see that. But uh, thank you and forgive me. Uh, I want to end this conversation, but we'll, please we'll stay a little bit more with me, but please... Uh, uh, let me a message for your colleagues, for people who uh, listen to us or to watch to us. I don't know, a few second message on the future and uh, please, please, uh, this message to be optimistic like you. <laughs> uh, that's a hard question because I, I didn't... Uh, uh, prepare the, anything about, uh, about this topic. But I can say for the students, maybe, because uh, I'm, I consider myself uh, still young, so I, I don't have too much to say to people older than me. 
but for the students, uh, I think that uh, they have to be passionate of what they are doing uh, or what they are, uh, what they will do soon. Uh, because without uh, passion, I think uh, it will be very hard to be a good uh, a good dentist. So I hope that everyone that uh, it's hearing us uh, or it's going to be a dentist uh, will be passionate about uh, uh, teeth and uh, the people behind the teeth. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. we'll uh, we'll close here. Thank you very much, and uh, keep in touch. See you next time. I hope I will find good button this time, and if it's working, this will be okay. Bye. Let's see. Let's see. One second, because I have this kind of problem. <laughs> we can... Are we still live? Yes, we are still live because I don't find. Uh, yes, I find it. See you. Bye bye.